Good evening, my dear church family. Today we celebrate the Ascension of the Lord. Since our celebration of the Mass will look very different for the time being, it may be helpful to make the following announcements to both, excuse me, make the announcements before Mass and before the distribution of Holy Communion. The coronavirus has affected our lives in ways that none of us could have ever imagined. Your fast from the Eucharist has been a burden, and we are grateful to be able to return now to the public celebration of the Mass. However, the pandemic is still with us, and so it is necessary to come back with some precautions in place out of a sense of Christian charity. A concern for the most vulnerable is one of our greatest obligations as a Christian people, and so I ask for your cooperation in following all of the guidelines. Let's keep our trust in the Lord to see us through until our entire community can come together again to worship in full. Our parish staff and volunteers are making every effort to sanitize our church after each Mass, including restrooms and frequently touched objects such as door handles, push plates, and handrails. Our worship will look and feel different for a while. The following are a few things for you to keep in mind concerning our liturgy today and in the coming days. First, Bishop Medley has extended his dispensation from the obligation to attend Mass on Sunday until further notice. We ask that everyone, including children over the age of three, wear your face mask throughout the entire Mass except for the reception of Holy Communion. For those who do not live in the same household, please offer the sign of peace to one another with a bow of the head instead of a handshake or hug. For those who do not live in the same household, please do not hold hands during the Our Father. We will not have any communal, communal singing for the time being. Our cantor and instrumentalist will provide the singing for us. We will not be passing the collection basket. To drop off your envelope will be at communion time. Two baskets will be next to the first pews of each side. The cry room is not available for use. At the end of Mass, we ask that you exit the church pew a few at a time, beginning from the back of the church. Please do not congregate after Mass, but go straight to your cars. Please stand.
ascension of Jesus. Sometimes we think too small and we just think of the ascension as Jesus' victory over death. His resurrection overcame death and then he returned to the Father on this feast. But really, really, the ascension is our victory because it's a pledge that what happened to him is going to happen to us. Glorious. Glorious. Imagine yourself after you've, after you've lain in the grave. Imagine yourself that you're going to be getting up too and rising to be with the Father, to be with life, to be with love. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus be with you today and with, with your spirit. spirit. Thank you. Let's acknowledge in silence that sometimes we don't live the way Jesus does. Sometimes we are selfish. Sometimes we don't live very high. We live a very low, self-centered life not a high, loving life. We ask God for mercy to transform us into the way Jesus lived. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal Son of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your presence filled the universe. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us home with you into bright glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us together to life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joy, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. We pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, Suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into the heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus had ordered them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Jesus approached them and said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I will be with you until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. gospel today gives the instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples for when he would leave, when he would go back to the Father. He gave these instructions in Galilee itself. He asked them to come back north where they had all been from, where they had lived for several years together as he was teaching them and as he was preaching. That county to the north. It's, the Holy Land is like four different counties, each one about 35 by 35 miles. Galilee, Samaria, Judea is where Jerusalem is, and then the Negev down below. It's really just a desert. There's hardly any towns, any roads, hardly any people. 
so to come back north, and he told them to go to a mountain. Now, in Scripture, and in our salvation history, the mountain is the place where God reveals himself and where God instructs people. Way back to Mount Sinai, when the Hebrew people got free from slavery in Egypt, Moses took them into the Mount Sinai area, and there God revealed himself, made a covenant with them that he would be their God, they would be his people, he would take care of them, and gave them what we call the Ten Commandments, plus other commandments for how to live as his people. <clears throat> Jesus used the same in the Mount of Beatitudes, when he gave the people, he went up on the mountain and gave the people this long address in Matthew, teaching us how, how to live in his way, living the way of love and forgiveness. He went to use the mountain again on the Mount of Transfiguration when he went up on the mountain with Peter, James, and John, and showed them, taught them that he was really also God, as he let his divinity show forth. And now he's back on the mountain, and he's giving them instructions for their mission when he's gone. Now, they were, they were supposed to start in Galilee like he did, but their mission is much more extensive than his was. Remember, he said, the Father has sent me for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Just for my lifetime. Just for these people here. He extended it now. Their mission was to make disciples of all the nations. And they, their mission was to last until the end of the age, until the end of the world. That's quite a commission. And that's why it's called, among Christians, the Great Commission. I want you to imagine just for a moment that you're hired as a consultant, as an inside consultant. And this group wants to follow that command to make disciples of all the nations. And they want somebody from inside, a Christian, somebody who's already a disciple, what you would suggest as to how they should do this, how they should carry out this commission. Well, you might start by suggesting, well, let's look back through history. Paul, Peter, Philip, those first people, they walked out into a new territory. There was no practice of people going with a mission to convert people. The Jews didn't do that. The other pagan nations didn't do that. They would receive people in if they wanted to become members, but they didn't go out to invite people to come in. This was new, this Christian enterprise. Peter started it, then Philip, and then of course Paul who went all through present day Turkey. And, and they were quite successful. We don't have the records of what the, all the other disciples did. The tradition tells us many of them went east into Iraq, Iran, and those areas. But we don't, we don't know for sure. But they were quite successful. And then came, not too long after that, the, the, the persecution. When Christianity grew, it was not quite so popular, especially among the Roman emperors, because it was the Christians were teaching that Jesus is God and not the emperor is God. That wasn't too popular. And so they started persecuting people. And then the, the form of evangelization was the witness of those martyrs. People by the hundreds and thousands, regular people like you and me, 
would be arrested and asked if we would recognize the emperor as God and, and offer incense to him. And if we declined, if we said, no, we offer, we serve one God, then you would be executed. And the willingness and the joy with which those people chose martyrdom, chose death, with confidence that God was going to raise them just like he raised Jesus, was a witness that just blew people's mind. And so more people joined the Christian way. That's where we got the message that the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christianity. It grew, it blossomed. And then when the Roman Empire was expanding and the civilization was expanding, they wanted to take the Christian way up into Ireland and England and up farther into England, they had been in London, but up farther, and, uh, and then in, up into Germany. So they developed the monastery system. The monks would build a monastery far out, and they would offer their services in teaching. They would teach the people, and they would offer those services, and then people would gradually become Christians, and then they would become their pastors. And they spread, they spread Christianity all through Europe um, with, the, with this monastery system. So we've done different ways to carry out this mission of Jesus. Then after, after some tech, more technology was developed and ships were made that could handle the oceans, the European countries began to colonize. And what they did then, they would come and conquer a peoples and force them to become Christians. Now, that's pretty distasteful to us, and it has been for a long time, because that violates everything we teach and hold about the dignity of the individual, the freedom of the individual. But they followed that method. The, uh, the Muslims had done it before, when they expanded their territory from Mecca, <clears throat> across North Africa and up into Mesopotamia, up into Iraq and Iran and those areas. Uh, but, so they made converts, but we can't really call that a successful way of giving Jesus his message. Uh, they didn't do it uh, evil with evil intent, I don't think, but it was evil to force people to become Christians. And then, when the evangelical movement developed in the 17th century, then it became, this commandment, this great commission, became the commandment for every member. And so there was a lot of evangelization done by individuals. And that's what made the United States Christian. We were not heavily Christian believers at one time, but the evangelicals, especially all, all across the South, uh, they changed it from being a pagan country to being a, a Christian country rather successfully. But now that system doesn't seem to be working. We don't really have a good way, do we, of that we all agree on of how we should fulfill this commission to make disciples of all the nations. The evangelicals, I've been impressed with my work with the Baptists. I've been impressed with the way they they take that as a as an individual commandment from God charge from God to do. And they'll, they'll try to do it, sometimes with some frustration, and sometimes with a fair amount of guilt, and sometimes I've seen they will compensate for that wanting to do it, but not being able, not being very easy doing it here in, in our, our present culture. They, uh, 
what they do, they compensate by giving hundreds of dollars per family when the World Mission Collection comes around once a year before Christmas. Hundreds of dollars per family. Very generous. Also, I know families that will pray for missionaries every day by name. They have missionaries that they have a relationship with working in various parts of the world and they'll pray for them. But we really have to confess that we don't have a good way. The, the Baptists are concerned with it. Uh, we all see our numbers dropping, our number of believers, children of believers, you know, not, not being able to find God, not just no longer, no longer believing. Talking to a friend this past week, they had a funeral in the parish, and this woman had ten kid, ten children, and none of them were active Catholics. None of them seemed even like they were active in any church. So we're we're not doing too well, but we still have this commandment. So what do we do? Well, that's why this company called you in as consultants. What do you, what is the Spirit telling you to do? How would you advise? What have you found works? There's no one way that we need to do it. We're free to share our faith just as we're free to choose how we're going to love. If we're going to be followers of Jesus, we've got to be loving others. We, if we're going to be followers of Jesus, we also have to be sharing our faith. But we don't, we each choose how we're led to do that. And what I'm going to suggest, uh, what I understand Pope Francis's way to be. He says he wants us first to accept the identity that we are you are a missionary disciple of Jesus. We all have various identities. We're a parent, we're a teacher, we're a, uh, we're a worker here or there, or we're, we're retired. So we have different identities. He wants us to take on that identity that my, my role in life, just as a role of a parent in life has certain responsibilities, so, as a follower of Jesus, with this commission, my role is to be a missionary disciple. So that I want people to, to come to Jesus and understand Him and fall in love with Him, just like I have. To follow Him, to give their life, to surrender to, to following His way of living and not the world's way. So he wants us to adopt that. And then he wants us to just live this role as intently as possible. As intensely as possible. And he wants us to accept the love that God has for us, for you. That infinite love that God has for you as an individual. To accept it and to return it. To know that you are loved so deeply and so intensely and in turn to love God and to love others as deeply as intensely as you are loved. And the joy that comes from that is the witness that we give of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. <clears throat> I think the reason why this personal kind of evangelism has not been working in the last hundred years is that, that we Christians have lowered our standards. We want to be good people, honest people, hardworking people, honest, fair, but we don't set our standard 
that we're going to be loving people above what the pagan loves, but above what the non-believer loves. We've accepted our culture's role as the natural way is to be have self-interest in what you do and the decisions you make. What's going to be good for me? What's going to be good for my family? That's natural. That's just like the rooster that runs around the yard <clears throat> mounting chickens, mounting hens. Just doing natural. That's the way he lives to get his genes to continue. And so we think that it's a natural way to live is to get ahead and to be concerned about our self-interest. That's not very impressive. Everybody does that. That doesn't catch anybody's attention, and that's not the way Jesus lived. Jesus didn't live for self-interest, and he never told us to. He always told us to love, especially those who are far away, those who are not close enough to our circle, those who are different from us, those who are on the edge. Those are the people. And I believe this is what Pope Francis is proposing, that our words don't carry much weight. That's not what people are looking for. They're looking for example. They're looking for modeling. They're looking for the depth of joy that you have as a follower of Jesus by living Jesus' way. That's what will invite them to open their lives to Jesus. We don't convert anybody. It's always the grace of God, the grace of Jesus, who does the converting, the changing of hearts. But just like Mother Teresa, when she was alive, she caught the imagination of people because her way of living was different from the ordinary run-of-the-mill person. And when we take surveys, Christians have no more love for, for, for refugees than non-Christians do. We don't exhibit any more love for them. We don't even exhibit any greater joy than the people who have no faith. So our job, as Paul, as the <clears throat> Pope Francis sees it, is to live as intently and as, as intensely as Jesus lived, loving others and living for others, not for self, and letting the joy of God, the constant joy of God, loving us, just well over us. So we're not up and down, up with successes and down with failures. That's not, that's the world's way. Of feeling better when, when all, everything is pleasant and, we, and everything works well. That's the natural way. Our way is to be so loved that we feel good even when everything is falling apart. Even when we're socially distant like we are now in this coronavirus. But the, that doesn't take away our joy because that doesn't take away our love from God and doesn't take away our love for God and for others. So choose which way you're going to follow the, co the commission, but Jesus is giving it to you just as he's giving it to me. Go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. Live Jesus' way and show others how to live it. God bless you.
Let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken it to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Because God, our Father, does love us so much, we have the courage to come to God with whatever we need, trusting that He hears our prayer. For the church, that we continue to carry on the commission Christ gave to his disciples, preaching, teaching, and baptizing to all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all nations lay down their arms and resolve never again to use instruments of death to resolve disagreements. And discord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who suffer from systematic persecution, oppression, and discrimination, that justice and righteousness might overcome sin and evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that orphans and abandoned children no loving homes and wise guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the farmers and ranchers who provide the world's food, that they receive a just reward for their labor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may be blessed with wisdom and hope, so that we may be effective witnesses in our communities and the joy and consolation of our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially those reading the book of the sick, that they uh, receive the visit of our Lord Jesus and bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, we entrust these prayers to you just as we entrust our lives to you, confident of your care for us, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
my sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. And the Lord says the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we are celebrating these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant it will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
mystery of faith. his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. And be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, Bishop Medley, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you be so in the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just to remind you once more, Bishop Medley has extended his dispensation from the obligation to attend Mass on Sunday. Therefore, you are not obligated to receive Holy Communion. If you do not receive Holy Communion, you may make a spiritual communion. If you choose to receive, please maintain a distance of six feet between one another and the communion procession. We will not be offering communion on the tongue. Please keep your face mask in place until you receive Holy Communion in your hand. Then remove the covering long enough to place the host in your mouth. We will not be offering the precious blood to the community at this time. We can make two lines of communion and the X's on the floor will help you keep the correct distance.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you allow us on earth to celebrate these divine mysteries. Grant, we pray, that our Christian hope may draw us onward to where we are united with you. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated just for a few comments or announcements. Um, well, some of you came and we celebrate Mass together, but next weekend, the 23rd and the 24th, all this uh, Mass goes back to the normal schedule. So we will have Mass here and we invite those who are not here today and the one that here today too, that, that we can come for Mass at 9 o'clock next Sunday. Uh, wear a mask when you come and uh, uh, all the time, just more or less you can follow what we did today, uh, you that are watching us uh, on this video. And, uh, and will we be safe? Uh, I'm confident and, and, and the, the building has been sanitized and, and uh, uh, I encourage you, but of course you know yourself better than I do, so if you don't feel comfortable, stay home. But if you can come and you're, I know we want to see each other, come. I will ask those who are here, we're not that many, if you can sanitize your area, uh, Lee will provide you with a, a, a wipes so you can sanitize very easy with the place where you're sitting and, and the, where you have touched. That way you can help us uh, next, next Sunday. Hopefully we will have people already scheduled for to do that. But at this time, if you don't mind, sanitize your area. The prayer? <laughs> she's, she's asking me about the prayer. So we're going to do it at the end of the Mass. After, after, the, the, uh, after the dismissal and, and, and go from there. Uh, those who are celebrating birthday today or this week, happy birthday to all of you. And those who are celebrating anniversary, unless somebody here, I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those who are celebrating anniversary, happy anniversary. Looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. The Lord be with you. Would you hear it? And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam through all the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>